Hey, what's up, Leo Ron here. Thank you for joining me in today's video. Gonna be a quick one. I wanna share with you uh, two recent paintings I worked on, and because I'm making a few changes uh, to my work method and experimenting with new things, I thought it would be cool to introduce to you some of these changes. Now, I have talked, if you've been following me anywhere, you know, I'm trying to focus more on creation, and then a lot of the videos will be, maybe, me, be, maybe be more geared towards documentation and showing you what I came up with and what I created. Let's try and turn on the light. Let's see if it makes things eh, maybe a little better. So we'll we'll keep it on. I don't I don't know. Did it make the upper camera worse? No, I think that's good. So uh, I want to show you these two paintings, and the the basic difference in my approach here was um, being a little freer with how I use uh, opaque versus uh, transparent paint. So what I did was I first started with this one. Let me start with this. So this is a beautiful scene from Tbilisi, uh, Georgia, and so I, I began working on this painting, and at some point I felt like. I'm off with a lot of things. I kind of got a lot of the things I wanted to, where I wanted them to be, like the mountain ridge in the background uh, and maybe some of this bridge and area, but it was a big mess and a lot of the values were off. So I thought to myself, what will happen if I completely disregard the small details and kind of leave them for later and first focus on getting the main large shapes properly? So I started darkening whatever was necessary. I started lifting aggressively, which is why you see a lot of this weird technique. It just feels different, right? It feels maybe even a little overworked, right? More than usual, at least. Um, but the end result was I got the values to be where I wanted them to be. And by the way, the colors is something I really like. I went back to using some more quinacridone rose, which I'm going to implement a lot of in the next couple of uh, months, because I really enjoy this paint. But in any case, and then I said, I'll completely disregard the details and go for that overall impression, knowing that I can add those later on with opaque paint. So, a lot of this painting relies on that opaque paint. So you see all of these touches here, it's just my John Brilliant white paint mixed with maybe a different one, maybe with a bit of blue, with a bit of orange here, right? I brought this back afterwards. So, basically, the way the process looked on a macro level was the first maybe 50% was just getting establishing the main shapes, which is the bridge, these mountains, these areas without all the details, and this church here, whatever that is, right? So I established those, and then everything else, all of the details, and I skipped some highlights, but all of the details came in the next 50% where I mixed adding darker details and lifting, and also putting a lot of opaque paint, a lot of opaque paint. So what you see here, it's kind of a hybrid process of using it 50% watercolor and then the other 50% almost like acrylics, right? But I did use watercolor for the whole thing. So just an interesting thing I wanted to share with you because it gives me a little more freedom in that I'm feeling okay if I skip some highlights and if I skip some details and, and think first about the, the beauty of the whole thing as a whole and then look at how many details and I, I overcrowded it with details but look at how easy it is to add so many, so many of the details like this just later on, right? With opaque paint, I even used my white gel pen here for some details on the cars and then it kind of gives you the, the beautiful freedom in my opinion of, of an oil painting or acrylics where you can just continue layering and layering and layering and, and patching up areas that maybe look a little off, right? And improving different areas that, that don't work as well. To add, like, to make this look kind of like a building and then add this other rooftop next to it, add opaque over it, right? And I mixed my uh, white opaque paint that you can see here a little more uh, cleanly. So this mark here is that paint. Uh, but I mixed it with some blues, as you can see here. I mixed it with some yellows and, and greens, just using it freely. To bring out, to bring back any highlight I needed, pretty much without worrying too much about it. So that was really fun. So that was one process, and then I did this, which is car 82, I believe. Yeah, I write down the numbers here. Uh, car, right? Uh, now this process was maybe geared more towards the 75% uh, transparent, and then I started adding the opaque paint. Not a lot of it, but some of it for sure. And you can see it here in this area and. And at the back here, are some of those highlights I brought back using this. Uh, but for the most part, there is even some opaque paint in the shadow here. I don't know why, maybe by accident. But but this I really like. And one more thing I'll touch on in, in one second is this area. But generally speaking, just not being scared of letting the result lead the process, right? So instead of, 
many games, so I'm going to close the door. Instead of worrying about um, uh, following a certain process from the beginning and, and insisting mentally on following that, right? Instead of being persistent in that's how I do things, let the result you want to achieve dictate the process. So it's just a more a freer way in my opinion and that's what I'm gonna try and implement in more of my works which is why it was very important for me to share these two processes with you now I haven't forgotten this section what I did here was a lot of wet and wet and starting from warm to slightly cooler to slightly cooler and I just think this all of this nuance here there's just a lot going on that looks really good when balanced with the other elements so uh, a lot of this slightly yellowish and slightly reddish and then slightly dark and black neutral tint works really well in my opinion now overall the impression didn't turn out exactly like i wanted with this particular one uh, i was seeing something a bit different in my mind's eye a little more simplification here in the in the cast shadows but that's fine maybe i should just continue this shadow that i kind of stopped here and it will improve things one last thing I will say, this here is my favorite bit. You see this contrast with the smooth transitions and harsh transitions, that's definitely one of my favorite areas. And also this here, the, I don't know what you call this, but the blue here, just strong blue, looks really good in my opinion. Uh, so yeah, so just to sum it up, these two paintings did a bit of a different approach, let some of the, of some of the process be traditional watercolor and then just decided that whatever I mess up, I'll do with opaque paint mixed with uh, transparent paint and just see where it gets me and see how far I can take it and how much I can lighten things up and how much I can uh, uh, just do a whole stage that is this play, right? Uh, and a big part of it is letting the result come before everything else as a priority which makes a lot of sense and it's something I feel like happens to me more naturally when I'm outside if I'm doing plein air in the rare occasion I'm more engaged with the the subject matter in front of me and so I completely forget about the process which funny enough leads to some bad results sometimes because you're not following your usual process but on the other hand it's almost like the the view in front of you dictates what you're doing in the work order and maybe you'll decide to work from a different detail outwards and and do some things that are very unconventional right this edge I smoothened out afterwards using this um, this brush, the Royal and Lang Nickel. Uh, so the process was very all over the place because it was dictated by the end result. And maybe it's something to to consider and have in mind to give priority, more priority to, because it will inevitably get you closer to the result you want, even though the technique route is a little strange. But in any case, this is it. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you have, let me know in a comment down below what else you want me to see. I will try and document more of what I'm creating as I'm putting more emphasis on that and really prioritizing that time. Uh, and also leave a like, that always helps. Subscribe if you still aren't, and I will see you again in the next video real soon.